everyone. My name is Ajibola Akamo, and I'm an investment analyst for Narametrics, and I am on the call with Roberto. Roberto is the CEO and founder of Crypto Moon. Crypto Moon is a play and earn uh, blockchain gaming experience that combines Pokemon and some other gaming products. And I would want um, Roberto, please tell us what Crypto Moon is all about. Well, uh, you said it correct. I mean, uh, thank you and happy to be here. Uh, thank you very much, Ebola. Um, you said it right. I mean, Cryptomon is a play and earn uh, game and not a play to earn game. Uh, this is something that we always stress. Uh, I like to stress it quite a lot. And the reason why is because we do believe that, you know, play to earn, uh, they open up the entire market opportunity, but they are not going to be sustainable. I mean, the entire logic behind a play to earn, it means that people are playing because they want to earn money. Uh, while instead, we, as a gamer, I do believe that people need to play because they want to play, you know, because the game is funny. The game is engagement. The game is, you know, challenging. I mean, they like the game. And so that must be the first reason why, you know, people should play. Because otherwise the game is going to be boring, you know, and then people will stop playing it at a certain point. And then happens, you know, what we see happening in the market where you see a lot of play to earn, you know, projects coming in, people jumping on board, milking and getting all the coins they can. And then when the foundation reserve is over, they leave, you know, and they go for the next one. And this is not what we want to do. Uh, we want to create a real game where players have, you know, uh, they're going to find a great time playing, video, playing Cryptomon. And on top of that, as a cherry on the top of the cake, they will be capable to earn the money. So that's the reason why we call it play and earn and not play to earn. But yeah, what is Cryptomon about? Um, Cryptomon is a combination of CryptoKitties, Pokemon, and Tamagotchi. So as you can see, this is uh, these are the Cryptomons. Um, I can see you're repping your, country, your company really well with the merch. Sorry? I say, I see you're repping your company really well with the merch. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a hoodie we made for the first company retreat uh, that we had here in Amsterdam uh, a month and a half ago. Uh, but yeah, going back to Cryptomon, uh, let's say this. I'm a very, very big Pokemon fan. I'm class 1992, so I grew up, you know, playing Pokemon. And when I was a kid, I guess with most of uh, people like me in my generation, in my age group, uh, when we were playing those games, we were really leaving the world, you know, that. Uh, we were really feeling that we were the trainer. We were really creating a bond connection with the uh, Pikachu. I created with Bulbasaur and Hamtharos. They were my two uh, favorite Pokemon. Um, but then at the end of the day, everything was just a game. You know, it was just there. So that was kind of my dream as a kid, you know, to, to make it real, to have it real. And that's actually what we are trying to do with Cryptomon is mm -hmm. trying to, since we are leveraging the NFT and the blockchain, we are kind of capable to recreate, you know, the Pokemon games, you know, the Pokemon world, but making it a little bit more real. Unfortunately, we can't have a Pikachu right now in the reality. You know, maybe we're going to invest in the future. We come up with a solution to have a real Pikachu, but at least, you know, we can uh, overcome some of these. I mean, every Cryptomon is an NFT. So you own the real Cryptomon, it's yours. And it's unique, as is your own unique DNA. And every time you win battles with him, you increase his value. If you spend time in training him, you make him stronger, his values become higher. Because, of course, you invest a lot of time and resources. And since it's an NFT, you know, it really grows up uh, also in terms of value. And on the other hand, leveraging this, we will finally be capable to create that economy that you have in, in, in Pokemon. So the fact that you can decide if you want to become um, a fighter. So someone that, you know, uh, you go out, you fight against other players, you win the tournaments, and then winning the tournaments will lead you to win the money and to become the world champion and so on. Or you can become a breeder. You decide, yeah, I don't care to fight. I really like to, you know, combine the different DNA to create the best breed. So people will come to my shop to buy it. Or you have, you can be a shop owner, crafting items, and then selling the items to other players. So this is kind of what we're trying to, to achieve. It's really taking those old fashioned Pokemon game and, you know, revamp them uh, for the 30 years old kids like me out there. 
Right. Thank you so much for that, Roberto. Thank you for giving us that overview. So I'm going to get a little bit serious here, talking about gaming economics and why, you know, a lot of play to earn games have a lot of Ponzi mechanisms in their economies, which renders them unsustainable in the long run, right? So um, looking at it from the traditional gaming perspective, I mean, we saw the problem with traditional gaming. It was only a handful of people that were able to monetize that space and be able to earn an even from that. I'll give you a case point. Um, the alias, the person that goes by the alias Ninja is one of the biggest gamers out there with a network of $40 million. And even me, for example, and some other gamers that we bought in-game items and whatnot, um, not only are we not making money from these games, at the same time, we're paying so much for in-game items that the games still own and they don't belong to us. So I wanted to ask you, do you think that your gaming economy, your play and earn metric, why is it so unique and why is it able to more or less trump the traditional gaming sense and also trump the play to earn that we are currently seeing all around? Well, you said it correct. I mean, um, as a gamer also, I found myself, you know, where you, I always make the example, you know, you, you, you play like, imagine that you play an online game, whatever, you know, and you spend a lot of time and money, especially in doing your in high school, you have a lot of free time. I miss those days where I was playing entire days, you know, uh, as soon as coming back from school, playing, playing, playing. Uh, now I can't anymore, unfortunately. I have a family, uh, and that's the reality, you know, when you're a teenager, you spend a lot of time and, and the few money you have, you know, in the game, and then the more you grow up, you start spending more, you have less time, but you spend more and a certain time and, you know, family, work, and your playing time is really reduced. I mean, I usually go to sleep at 2 a.m. because I can play from midnight to a.m. and 2 a.m. That's the only, you know, time frame in my day where I can play a bit you know uh, so what happened then you know you played a lot and then you can't play anymore and then all the time and money boom gone i mean what's the worth of it you know what's the value of it i always make the example indeed someone in world of warcraft you know spend a lot of time money making your avatar the strongest the, the best uh, armor the best uh, i don't know axe whatever and then you can't play anymore and then what do you do I mean, nothing. Uh, you can't even sell it. If you sell your account, they caught you, they ban you for life. You know? So as you said, you don't own anything there. Uh, and that's, I think that's the reason why I think NFT blockchain, it could be one of the biggest evolution of gaming. Because finally, gamers are, are going to own those things that they actually buy. They're, the time they're going to invest will finally, you know, accrue value. And they, I always say that with this, we are moving from digital in-game items from, to digital in-game assets. So meaning that now we are having with NFT, we're kind of in blockchain, we can, you know, uh, digitalize those assets. So those items, you know, the Axe or the Cryptomon is not an item anymore for the game. It's going to be an asset that is really, which have a value on top of it. And this is the first part, which is, I think, right now, why blockchain gaming is so important. You know, as a technology applied to gaming, it's going to be, boom, mind-blowing. I think more and more game company will go there. The second point, I, you are correct about the, you know, the play to earn versus the play and earn. And then what's the difference there we have? So first of all, as you said, if you look at the play to earn, those are just the Ponzi schemes. I mean, very elaborated, better, nicer whatever, but they are Ponzi schemes, you know, they work until they keep having people coming in, so to say. Um, and then, of course, most of them <clears throat> crumble down. And that's, you know, as all the Ponzi scheme are unsustainable. So what we did to make it sustainable at the end of the day was to combine the free to play mechanics with the play to earn mechanics. So what is what is free to play mechanics? Free to play mechanics is you can play for free. You can advance, you can make your character stronger. You can, you know, easily play for free, like Fortnite. You know, that's a typical example of free to play. But if you don't have enough time to invest, you know, in the game to get stronger, of course, you can buy items that allows you, you know, to catch up with the people that have time. Because it's the, in gaming, it's either one of the two, or you invest a lot of your time, or you invest money if you don't have time, you know? 
Um, so with these mechanics in place, we also have it. So you can take care of your Cryptomon for free. You can make, you can train them for free. You know, you can do a lot of stuff for free. But of course, if you want to speed up the process, then you can buy premium items. You can buy loot boxes. Inside of the loot boxes, you can find premium items, such as premium training tickets or better food, or better healing potions, and so on. You know? So how, what's that happening here? So people buying loot boxes, you know, with the Kmon coin, which are our token, all the funds that we are collecting then goes inside of a treasury pool, you know? And then, of course, out of the treasury pool, we do take a stake of it because at the end of the day, as a company, we need to make revenues. Otherwise, no salaries for the team, no game will be developed. Uh, so we, we take our part of it, okay? And the rest of it, it will be paid out to the people that completing the paying uh, quest or mechanics every week. And it's also dynamics. So what does it mean? That we are not giving out, let's say, uh, 200 Kmon coin every week. There's going to be a week that we're going to drop 200 Kmon coin. There will be a week that we will drop 100 Kmon coin. There will be a week that we drop 120 Kmon coin because it really depends on the amount of money that the treasury funds collected, you know, from the in-game activity from the players and the number of players that were capable to, you know, get to the point that they can earn money and they can redeem money. So with this kind of things, as you see, is a circular economy. So the money that goes in are the money that goes out, you know? So technically speaking, and that's happening, which is currently happening, if you look at on player base, I mean, we are running between 2,000, 2,500 daily active users as of today. Um, and we are still not investing a lot to grow because we have a lot of other things to focus on. But the, game, the, the economy is still running. People are getting paid every single week. Uh, they're earning their money because the circular economy is there. And of course, the more people will come in, then the more the economy will run, you know? So maybe the payout will be higher some days, some, some other days it will be lower. But since in a circular economy, no matter how, many, how much players are joining, the, the payout will still be there because it's circular and dynamic. So in this way, it's fully sustainable. You know, because the money that we collect from the mark from the users are also the money that goes back to the users. And in this way, uh, we are not, at the end of the day, we're not printing money. So the other games, you know, the Ponzi schemes play to earn, at the end of the day, what they were doing was printing free money and keep, you know, giving money back to the, to the players, while instead we're not giving foundational, foundation reserve tokens, nothing. We're just keep giving the tokens that are already in circulation are circulating within the economy, like it happens in every single day in our life. All right. So basically, from what you're, you're telling me, it's Crypto Moon has more or less replicated the real world in its gaming mechanisms. And that's Correct. actually really awesome. That's actually really, really awesome. Because I mean, at the end of the day, most of the time, uh, I, I, Bola, you, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I don't know why I'm... Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm out of focus. I don't know, the camera now doesn't want me to be in focus. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm fine. Uh, but most of the time, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, a circular economy is what we have in the world. I mean, of course, you know, in the last two years, the government printed money uh, to sustain the COVID crisis and everything. And now we are seeing that due to this, now the inflation is high, interest rate is high, you know, we're going to provide a correction and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, this is a circular economy. There's almost always the same amount, you know, plus the correction of the inflation of money circulating and it's passing between people, mm -hmm. you know? And this is exactly what happened in crypto money. All right, That's awesome. So awesome. this is make it sustainable. That's actually pretty good to hear. And, um, you know, it's always good to sell something safe than sell something unrealistic. So moving on from that, yeah. So moving on from that, I mean, um, you know, I covered the story on Crypto Moon raising uh, $10 million on uh, Naira Metrics. So can you tell us a little bit more about that fundraising round? And um, it's, it's quite intriguing that, you know, it, for a play to earn, play and earn, sorry, plan earn uh, from like yourself, you guys aren't actually 
raising money through the issue of tokens. You guys have actually raised money through organization and institution and actually gotten back, you know, um, you know, actual physical cash into your treasury. So I wanted to ask you, you know, this $10 million, what, what is it going to be used for? Well, one thing, product. <laughs> the main objective <laughs> of, I mean, if there is something that we learned uh, since we started is that building a, a game is freaking expensive in terms of money and time. And so it's two times expensive because, you know, time equal money. So it's money times two. Uh, so building a game is tremendously expensive exercise. It costs a lot of money because you, just thinking, you know, you have character designer that are those that create the character, you know, the design. But then they need to transpile those and move into VFX animator. You have uh, audio producer, you have Unity develop, you have developers, you have 3D artists, 2D artists. I mean, there is so much people involved in building a game, even if the game is you know, simple and stupid, that is really complicated. There is so many things that goes together. So the main reason why we decided to raise it was, I remember it was November, December last year, then I had that and I thought, okay, now it's time for us, uh, you know, to be, you know, to focus on the product, you know, to really, you know, hammering on the product. And, uh, and back then, I mean, back then the token was, the Cayman coin also was, you know, traded at like 15, 20 cents or something like that, you know, so it was like 10 times what it says today. Um, but I asked, I said to myself, I said, I'm not going to raise in token. I'm not going to sell tokens to raise. Uh, for mainly two reasons. The, first of all, I'm going to raise money. The reason why I'm going to raise money it was because I said, I don't want the entire team to, you know, to instead of working in creating the best product they can, in checking the chart of the game on coin to understand if the company still have the money or not. You know, uh, I, I didn't want that. And that's actually a really good point. <laughs> So even yeah, in the market work. downturns and upturns, it doesn't really matter. The money is always going to be there. So that's actually really exactly, good. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I didn't want the team to to to, to working and stays there looking at the chart. Oh, fuck off! We 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 lost. I don't know five millions. Do do I get paid this week? You know that that kind of stuff. People are people can't work with that, and you can't expect people to create very great product if they are working with their focus is not on the product, but is on you know the token. So that was the reason why I decided I want to get you know a full bag of cash to sustain the product development. So the entire team can really, technically speaking, don't care if the Cayman coin will goes up or down, you know, because we are still here gonna be for building. And second, then I said, okay, are we going to raise in equity or are we going to raise in uh, in tokens? So meaning selling tokens or are we going to sell um, shares of the company? The reason why I decided to go for selling shares of the company and not tokens were, first of all, um, because the main idea was I want someone, the investor that I want to bring in, I want someone that are here for the long term. Because you will, we all know that usually the ROI, um, the ROI time on an equity investment, when it goes well, when it goes well, uh, for investors is between five to 10 years. Okay. On a token, it's a couple of months. And even though we are vesting the token, we would have vested the token in two years, those investors, as soon as they can, they would have find it, you know, an opportunity to start selling the token and get back of their investment and start ROI. Because at the end of the day, this is their job. They invest because they want to make money, not because they're for charity. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's the reality of fact. So the reason why I said, I don't want tokens, in, I don't wanna do this in, in tokens deal because I really want people that are believing in what we are aiming to build. People that are really thinking that what we are building is going to be a very big company in the future. And they are you know, um, comfortable to take the, the challenge and the bet to invest in the equity of the company and wait for five, 10 years before they can ROI. And, uh, and yeah, that's kind of it. So we were capable to bring indeed uh, $10 million uh, with a company value that brings the valuation of the company $15 million, which is also very, you know, very, we're very positive about it because I mean, 
uh, the company, when we closed the round, the company was eight months old. So uh, we were kind of, uh, it was a very nice valuation that we got. And uh, yeah, and now everything is full speed on the, on the product development. And we also been lucky because as you see right now in the market, there is kind of a downturn is coming. You know, people are talking about downturn and not only from tech companies, you know, public company, general company, but also especially for startup, tech startup, you know, they, they all said that, you know, VCs are not going to invest so easily anymore. They want to take, you know, usually, usually a company take a, a funding like ours usually is, is estimated to last for 18 months, you know, because 12 months fully focused and then the last six months you, you go and start raise for the next round. Uh, probably this kind of situation that we are going, it will force a lot of company, you know, to extend their runway, which is something that we are doing already. So we are planning to extend our runway from 18 to 20, 24 months in order to be even, you know, safer, so to say. Um, but it might turn out for us a great opportunity because we will see that we will see less competition, less and less competitor, you know, will join the market and they will struggle more to find capital because of course the market is gonna be in a downturn. And for us, you know, being capable to raise just before the downturn was a great, was, you know, a great catch. And, and also we will find, you know, better talent, you know, we, you can see already happening. A lot of tech companies are laying off tremendous talent and we're looking, you know, ready to find, you know, who can fit and, and join our company. So at the end of the day, uh, this 10 million rounds couldn't, you know, happen in a better moment in our position for, for, for our company. Uh, because if we look at the next big, at the big companies that we are, you know, big tech companies, all of those, are companies that were capable to build during a bearish market. If you're capable to build and to sustain yourself and to survive a bearish market and building during a bearish market, when the bull will start again, then you'll find in the best, in the best position ever. And this is exactly what we are going to do as a CryptoMon company for the next two years. All right, thank you so much for that. I mean, that's quite sustainable and that's actually quite encouraging. But, you know, I think um, when I was reading about CryptoMoon, I got, you know, a lot of information, especially right now, the earning mechanics only come through by doing uh, in-game quests. There's still a lot of updates we're expecting. We're talking about the mobile application. I've been hearing chat about that. And also the, more or less the P2P battle. We have not seen that also. So I wanted to ask you, First thing, you know, on the P2P, but when are we going to see that very soon? Are we going to see that anytime soon or when are we going to see that coming? So the, the current support, the current plan we have is, as you said, currently the, the next big release is going to be the mobile app, which is okay. everyone who's striving for. Uh, we should be able to open the closed beta. So for a specific part of our community, uh, the early supporter, they will get the app in preview, hopefully this week already. Uh, we started, you know, collecting their contact details to send them the app uh, for, an, for for Android. While we're still kind of fighting with Apple uh, to get approved, uh, you know, Apple is way more strict in terms of policies, and so we are trying to figure out, okay, how can we make us, you know, uh, compliant, or mm -hmm. you know, what Apple wants us to to be compliant. So first of all, we will release on um, on Android. Um, what is going to happen afterwards is by the end of June, uh, we will release the first battle mechanics and we call it the practice mode. So players will be capable to fight against Cryptomon NPC, random battles and earn uh, training tickets, like just, you know, training your Cryptomon, so to say. And then by the end of July, uh, we will release the first full version of the single story, single mode, single player campaign, the PVE completed. So mm -hmm. meaning that they will have, you know, six stories that they need to play. So there is actually an entire storyline connected with the Cryptomon lore that it will introduce the Cryptomon players to, uh, to the Cryptomon world and everything. And there they will be capable to start earning also Kmon coin uh, with that. And, and then from September and onwards, the focus it will be mainly on the PvP. Uh, the first feature that we can see happening, it will be a friend list with a friendly match. So player will be capable, hopefully in September, 
late, by late September, mid October, it's still kind of fugazi fugazi, but that's kind of the time slot uh, to challenge their their friend and uh, and fight against each other. Then we're gonna have a leaderboard, kind of a league, so that allows player, you know, to part to to be in a specific league based on you know yeah. how much yes. they won and, and mm -hmm. so on. And the last, which is aimed for end of October, end of between October and November, for sure, my plan is by the end of the year is the, the tournaments. So then, which is going to be probably the most interesting part is where a player will be capable to participate in Cryptomon tournaments where they need to buy a ticket to participate. And then all the tickets will create a prize pool and the winner will get uh, the Cayman coin prize pool. All right, that's actually pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to these updates. By the way, I do I do play the game. I have my own uh, Crypto Moon and I've been basically trading my Crypto Moon so far. And it's been a really, really awesome experience. So I can't really wait for that, you know, P2P, the mobile application and, you know, um, the story mode, especially. Can't wait for all that. So I think this is the end of the interview really. So uh, Roberto, where do you see, you know, the play to earn space in general this is your final question where do you see the play to earn space and the metaverse space in general where do you see it being in the next five to ten years well i think what we're gonna see is that there's gonna be a lot of clean i mean a lot of project will be cleaned up uh because right now i think as you see it's kind of we are with web three is something that we're we we saw already happening we you know with, with web two back in the you know late 90s early 2000 you know when uh, there was the dot-com bubble so a lot of project jumping in it's kind of a gold rush a lot of hype and mostly hype mostly hype and so what we're going to see, as always, is that, you know, very big spike in growth of, you know, this kind of companies and project and blah, blah, blah. And then there will be, as soon as the hype will, you know, slow down and will pass over to another thing, uh, everything will go down. Um, and the few company that will leave, I mean, few, I mean, probably thousands of companies, of course, but not that, not few compared to what we're going to have, what we have right now, uh, will become the next the next big companies. Uh, and this is what happened, you know, with the dot com. There was plenty of dot com companies, plenty of money, blah, blah, blah. Market crashed for three years. <laughs> A lot of them, you know, have been killed. And what happened left? We have Yahoo, Google, Amazon, the biggest one, you know? So, sorry, uh, light. Uh, so I think this is what is going to happen also for the Web3 and especially for the play to earn. Uh, I think at the end of the day, we will see blockchain integrated into games and NFT integrated into games more and more. I do believe in a certain point, it's not going to be a new thing. In five years from now, I think it's going to be common to have NFT implemented in games, but not only games that coming from the bottom like ours, but you will find NFT blockchain related things also in uh, games from Epic, in games from Ubisoft, you know, from the, you know, very big traditional publisher. Um, because as I said, it's here to stay. It's probably the biggest evolution for gaming since quite a lot. Gamers are, if, if done it properly, if you build a proper game and you added this, is a win-win for the gamers. Um, and again, regarding the metaverse uh, and in general, I think, as I said, it's all right now, it's all about hype. If you look at right now, everything is a metaverse. Everyone is working on a metaverse. It's metaverse here, it's metaverse there, blah, blah, blah. And they're all talking like metaverse is something new. Okay. But metaverse existed since 20 years. I mean, Second Life was incorporated 25 years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. And that was a metaverse. If you play EVE online, you play in a metaverse. If you play Call of Duty online, some sort of a metaverse. If you play Minecraft online, it's a metaverse. Metaverse exists already. It's not something new. But the only, if, if you see, alongside 20 years, where is the only thing that metaverse actually existed and survived? Gaming. Because the problem that metaverse have right now is that everyone is saying, yeah, we are creating the parallel universe for you to live and do blah, blah, blah. 
To me, it doesn't make any sense. And the reason why I'm saying so is, first of all, look at what happened in the past. You know, Second Life crashed. That the entire idea of Second Life was actually a metaverse as we see right now, crashed. What survived was the online gaming metaverse. And if you look at all the metaverse platforms that you have right now, go inside of them. They're empty. It's just you yourself, maybe some other people, and they work quite a lot on top of events. There is a specific concert, people sign up, log in, and then log out. You know, they don't come back because they don't have any, they don't need, they don't have any reason to come back. You know, while online gaming is the more probably the most reason. I mean, I, I don't know how many players are playing uh, Minecraft online on a single day. I think millions and millions of players are connected on Minecraft servers every single day, you know? And these are millions and millions and millions of players uh, part, be part of a metaverse and it's living, it's alive. Um, so for me, metaverse is just a buzzword that you need, to, we are using it because we have to use it because everybody's using it. But at the end of the day, it's nothing different. Have a, it's have a sense and a meaning in the terms of mobile, uh, sorry, multiplayer game. The fact that you have like your second live experience, I don't think that it's gonna happen, that, that will last for quite a lot, to be honest. At the end of the day, the real life is better. Yes, I think everybody will enjoy physical interaction as opposed, you know, um, interacting in the digital space in general. But, you know, we've been seeing a lot of investments in the space and that's what prompted the question in the first place. So thank you so much, Roberto, for giving us a tour, basically, of Crypto Moon and how it works. The 10 million funding round, telling us what it's going to be used for and also more or less explaining why the play and earn dynamics is here to stay and is here to stay for good. I really appreciate you for taking the time yeah, and also talking to our audience at Biometrics. Thank you so much, Roberto. Thank you very much for, for you to having me. All right, awesome.